What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is The Main Street Investor, and today we're going to analyze another technology growth stock that is absolutely crushing it right now. Of course, I'm talking about Snowflake, ticker symbol SNOW, which is a cloud infrastructure stock that just released its earnings today, and boy, was it good. As I mentioned, Snowflake is a company that deals in cloud infrastructure, and we can see that their whole goal is to create one platform to solve all of their clients' needs. This platform is designed to hold unstructured, semi-structured, and structured data, and it's meant to allow companies to call upon that data with high availability, share and collaborate that data, optimize their performance, manage the data, store it securely, and so much more. I thought this chart, even though I'm not super technically inclined, I thought it showed a great example of how much Snowflake has grown since April 20. 2020 on the left compared to October 2023, right before their earnings release. The company has tons of partners, and these are names that anybody would recognize. And their list of partners continues to grow, which signifies intense growth ahead for the company. As we can see here, their annual revenue has grown by 69% in just the last year. And the company does have a ton of remaining performance obligations, meaning they have a solid pipeline of jobs that they need to complete into the future. Their total customer base keeps growing and they now have more than a quarter of the Forbes Global 2000 companies as their own customers. It's pretty incredible and it underlines just how much of a behemoth Snowflake is becoming. What's even more interesting is that they're expecting 52% year-over-year growth in their customers that have over $1 million in product revenue annually. This means that not only are they adding more customers, but they're also adding more higher spending customers. Snowflake also has great retention rates, although we are seeing that number drop slightly. 135% in the most recent quarter is still nothing to complain about at all. I will say, though, that we will want to keep an eye on this metric because if that number continues to drop and really shows no sign of not pausing somewhere, then that could be a sign of some bad things to come in the future. But at least for the foreseeable future, things are looking pretty bright for Snowflake right now. Both earnings and revenue topped analyst estimates, and Snowflake's guidance also came in above expectations. What's also great is that they just inked a partnership with Amazon.com, which we all know is another massive cloud behemoth. And so this bodes well for the company's future growth and stability. On a gap basis, the company reported earnings of $0.65 cent loss, but that was better than the expected loss of $0.76, cents, which many analysts saw because of the lowered spend in cloud infrastructure due to companies pulling back on major investments currently. For next quarter, Snow set its revenue range to $716 million to $721 million against an analyst expectation of $696 million. This led Snow stock to go up 7.5% after hours today, just based on that upbeat news. What I will highlight here, and I think Investor Business Daily does a really good job of taking note of, is that Snowflake's business model is consumption-based rather than subscription-based. And what that means is that people buy the product up front. They don't pay for it over time, slowly, like a monthly fee. And so that does raise some concerns on slowing U.S. economy curbing demand because if companies can no longer afford a massive upfront payment, they're just not going to make that payment and they're going to make do with what they have. And so that is an exposure that Snowflake has that could hurt it if the economy takes a negative turn. So that was a quick look at Snowflake's recent earnings. Really quick, before we jump into the financial numbers, if you could please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to my channel, I would greatly appreciate it. And hey, maybe it would feel good supporting a small YouTuber like myself. Thank you so much for taking the time to view this video. And with that, let's get into it. Revenue growth has been Almost unbelievable, growing by over 124% per year over the last five years. In 2019, the company was earning under $100 million, and in the trailing 12 months, they've earned almost $2.5 billion, with a B. EBITDA is much uglier and has continued to be more and more negative over time. This is typical with growth companies in their major growth phase, so this isn't exactly a red flag, but it is something to be aware of, that the company is not earning money on a gap basis. Their operating earnings have looked exceptional, though, going from negative to $0.69 cents per share in the trailing 12 months. Snowflake's gross margins are pretty darn good at 66%, and they continue to expand over time, which is really great to see. The company's operating margins are still very negative, of course, because they don't earn an actual income. But as they improve, that means the company's cash burn isn't getting nearly as bad, and it shows that some of their products are starting to pay for themselves. Finally, return on assets have improved nicely, but they've kind of stagnated at about 10%, which isn't terribly alarming considering the fact that Snowflake is in such a massive growth phase and it's not focused on becoming profitable but we would still like to see their return on assets improve over time even if that number is staying negative. Snow's shares outstanding jumped significantly following their IPO and the company has continued to dilute shareholders over time. As I've said in other videos, this is not a 
an uncommon thing for growth companies. And because Snowflake is still in such a major growth cycle, we can probably expect them to continue to dilute shareholders, at least for the near to medium term future. Cash and short term investments on hand did jump nicely following the IPO, and the company has maintained a pretty steady level of about $4 billion, which is really good to see considering the company is still not gap profitable. Snowflake does not carry any long term debt, so that makes its net annual interest expense very positive because they're only making money from the cash that they hold and they don't pay any of that back in interest expenses. That's really nice to see, and honestly, I wish I could make $150 million in interest expenses in the last 12 months too. The company's levered free cash flow went positive in 2021 and has continued to expand really, really nicely, and it's currently sitting at just under $900 million in the trailing 12 months. Free cash flow per share has also improved nicely, and we will look for this number to continue to expand faster than the dilution that is currently taking place. And so that brings us to the PE chart, which again is not looking very normal because of Snowflake being such a new company and such a major growth company, the PEs are going to be all over the place. And as we can see, the company, when it first earned a small profit back in 2022, it was trading at a PE of almost 15,000, which is ridiculous. But because of the growth of the company and a little bit of a price correction, we can see that the PE is now sitting at approximately 685. That is still exceptionally high, but if Snowflake continues to grow at such a rapid pace, we could see this number 685 continue to drop just because the company is earning more and more and more faster than the stock price is increasing. Moving over to the value chart, which is admittedly a bit more helpful in this situation, we can see that the current fair value PE for Snow is 487, and that's based off of its growth rate since it became a profitable company on a non-gap basis. The stock currently trades at about $170 per share versus its fair value of $122 per share based on that fair value PE of 487. What I do want to point out though is that the projected CAGR of this company is only about 67. And following my rules, that means that the fair value PE of Snow going into the future should be 67. So if we change the fair value PE to 67, we can see that the company looks much, much more overvalued right now. Today, my estimates would value Snow at about $17 a share. And by 2027, I would expect it to be worth about $75 to $80 a share. Now, that means that either I'm wrong or Wall Street's wrong in valuing this company so, so highly. But I do want to point out that growing at 67% per year over the next five years doesn't mean that that's just where it's going to stop. It could grow for 50% in the next five years after that, and then 30% for the next five years after that. And so that's why I think this stock has such a high valuation today is because its runway for growth is expected to be incredibly long as the world transitions to an all cloud sort of infrastructure for data and the internet and things like that. Am I being a bit conservative? Absolutely. But that's what I try to do with growth companies because like I say all the time, a growth company that stops growing tends to crash really suddenly. And so I try to make sure that I'm not on the wrong end of some really, really over optimistic assumptions. That's all. And so to summarize what I like about Snowflake as a company, number one, it's set to be the future. I mean, cloud infrastructure really does seem to be the next frontier of how everything is going to work. And so I think Snowflake being at the center of that is just a major pro for the company and for most investors that are currently involved with this company. Secondly, it's a shovel and pick type company. And what I mean by that is that it's creating the infrastructure for the future of the internet and the future of our interactions. And so it benefits from everything that occurs there. In case you've never heard stories of like gold rushes in the 1700s and 1800s, you know, the people who really got rich during the gold rushes were the ones that sold shovels and picks, not the ones that went mining for the gold. And so while in this future era of the internet where there's so many different companies all vying to be the number one company out there, they're still going to need to use the infrastructure that creates that internet. And with Snow being one of those companies that is the gatekeeper to that infrastructure, it bodes well for Snow to be a successful company in nearly any scenario. And finally, of course, a company that's expected to grow 67% over the next five years per year. I mean, that's just massive growth. That's excellent. And if the company can maintain growth numbers like that for several years, five or 10 or 15 years, there's almost no valuation that's too low for it. But of course, what you're doing when you invest in a company like Snowflake today is you're essentially betting that that growth path will occur and proceed as everybody is expecting. For me as a value investor, I like to wait until a company is being underestimated, not when it has incredibly high expectations. And so for me right now, I really just don't like the valuation of Snowflake. And that's just from a conservative investing point of view. 
I do not necessarily believe that you're buying a poor company if you buy Snowflake today. I just think it's probably at a value that is very, very rich and is expecting extremely, extremely good things in the future. And then the second thing I don't like is that Snowflake is a consumption or non-subscription revenue model, which means that a lot of the costs are put up front on a company. And that's not necessarily a bad thing when times are good because companies can afford to invest in themselves. But when times get tough, these consumption model companies tend to suffer the most because either a company buys your infrastructure or they don't. And so with those thoughts, I think I made it pretty obvious. I really like Snowflake as a company. I think it's an excellent company. I just do not like the value that it's currently trading at. And so for me, Snowflake is not a buy. What I will concede though, is that if you are buying this company, you're probably buying a very, very good company. Time will tell if it's able to live up to these massive growth expectations, but I do think that the technology is there. The product is great. The company executes well. So I think all of the building blocks are there for a major compounding stock. So with that, let me know what you think about Snowflake. Is there anything that I missed about the company or that you think I'm missing about the company? I would be really interested to hear your thoughts below. And really quickly, before you click off this video, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Again, it means a ton to me and I really enjoy bringing this type of content to all of you. I hope you guys have a great day and with that, goodbye.